people say show emotion, but it, it takes a lot to get me excited. Everything, man. I work my ass off, bro. I, like, I wouldn't have did this for the, the franchise, the, the organization, the, the fans, everybody, man. I wouldn't be able to play the way I play, man. Uh-oh, uh -oh. Roche came down bad on his left foot. See him holding on to his knee, holding on to his knee and down. The way I look at it within myself, why not? Why can't I be the MVP of the league? Why can't I be the best player in the league? I don't see why. Why? Why can't I do that? I ask you this, are you worried about his future? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Derrick Rose, as far as I'm concerned, is finished. So once again, we have to wonder, what is Derrick Rose's commitment? Because it sure appears to me that he isn't nearly as driven to win a championship as Bulls fans are passionate post Michael Jordan about winning another championship. Straight away look at a triple cancel. Last night offered everybody a glimpse. Rose fires away and hits it. Of what this young man could have been. Mm. And it robbed us. Those injuries robbed him. And it robbed us the ability to see him at his absolute apex. Yes, Rose! Oh, stop it! Stop it! They don't do him like that! Rose in attack mode. Up and under. Oh, he bounced the head! Rose. Rose trying to get open. Fires away. Bang! Left. Rose in the lane. Rose, good! Derrick Rose and the Bulls come back to take a one-point lead. The city of Chicago never completely ruled out a return to glory, but never in a million years did those very fans think they would get another iconic star to come around and take the city over. Certainly not only 10 years after Michael Jordan left his iconic legacy to rest in Chicago's history, suddenly, to the surprise of so many, there was this 6 foot 3 guard from Memphis that amazingly revived the entire city, unlike no player had ever done for any other city. With the first pick. In the 2008 NBA Draft, the Chicago Bulls select Derrick Rose from the University of Memphis. And thus, the birth of one of the most coveted athletes to ever put on a Chicago Bulls uniform. Percent from the field, 17 for 39. What a move by Rose! Oh! <laughs> yes, and it counts! Over! Derrick Rose put together one of the most rapid rises to superstardom this league has ever seen. But it wasn't before dragging the Bulls out of the doldrums the franchise had been in since the departure of MJ over a decade earlier. It was one of the biggest discrepancies in the win-loss column in a two-year period you would ever see. The Bulls won 41 games in each of D. Rose's first two seasons. But that's all the time the soon-to-become NBA MVP needed to get the Bulls back to their winning ways. After running away with the Rookie of the Year award and falling up with the memorable sophomore campaign, Rose was coming into his own, a leader, the face of an emerging franchise, and one of the most popular names in the sports world. For the 2010 NBA All-Star voting, 21-year-old Derrick Rose received nearly 600k votes, which was just enough to earn his spot among the top 10 leading vote getters in the Eastern Conference. Just a year later, when D. Rose was arguably having the most spectacular season at the age in the history of the sport, Rose earned nearly 2 million votes. 2 million! There was a reason for the quick rise in fame. I'm playing with the fastest guy. He had like a, a layup package that was just insane. Left hand, right hand. It was just it, the way he, the way he was doing it. The fear that he put in people uh, who played against him. The top guys, I would see fear in their eyes all the time, and I was like, okay, because he, he was quiet, but he was a killer. Something, something happened. Something impressed you about him. What, what was it, Coke? Well, I mean, I, I can tell when a player you know, truly wants to be better, when a player truly wants to improve. And, and I respect that about them. And I, I admire that. And if that was a quality that I, that I had when I was a kid growing up. Um, and, you know, that being said, I mean, I've seen improvement in this game from last year to this year. I mean, he has a long range ball now. He can scrap behind the pick and shoot. You know, he can pull up off the dribble and shoot. 
Um, you know, him getting to the rim obviously goes, you know, unquestioned. Um, so seeing that improvement you know, shows me that he's putting the time into the gym. Toughness to want to succeed and to want to do whatever it takes to succeed. When he came in the league, everybody said he couldn't shoot. Just like that, one summer, he has a jump shot. That doesn't happen overnight. I'm proud of him. He was nothing short of special. After back-to-back 41-win -back seasons for the Chicago Bulls, D. Rose's heroics led the team to their first 62-win season since MJ Bulls won 62 in 1998. That amazing 98 squad featured MJ, Pippen, Dennis Rodman, and a few notable role players. But don't get it twisted. The 2011 Bulls were talented. They had teams fearful of them, especially the guy that was running away with the MVP award on their team. Derrick Rose's 2011 season was next level. But I don't think it's understood enough just how special this young man was at just 22 years of age. During the 2010-11 season, 22-year-old Derrick Rose went for 25 points and 7 assists and was head and shoulders the best player on the most winning team in the NBA and was the solo all-star on his team. In an era that featured the Big 3 Miami Heat, the Big 3 in Boston, the Kobe Paul Gasol Lakers, and a young OKC team with Westbrook, Harden, and KD, what D-Rose pulled off that season from an individual and team perspective may not ever be replicated. At 22 years old, Kobe had Shaq, Michael Jordan wasn't healthy enough to play a full season, Magic Johnson had Kareem, and Steph Curry was just good. At 22 years old, a 6'3 point guard from Chicago put together one of the greatest seasons. Forget about a 22 year old, one of the greatest seasons ever. Here are D-Rose's win shares, win shares per 48, offensive box plus minus, and value over replacement stats at 22 years old. And we're going to stack it up against the greatest players of his time at the same age. Derrick Rose at 22 years old was just as good as, if not better than all of these all-time greatest players of the 2000s and the 2010s. There's one thing that only Derrick Rose could say though, I won MVP at 22 years old. You can't calculate that. I mean, just to hear you say he was the youngest MVP right. ever. I mean, so give you goosebumps? Yeah, it does. I mean, <laughs> this league is since 1946. Right. And then all of a sudden, here was a young kid from Inglewood right mm -hmm. down the road here becomes the MVP in his third season. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't even wrap my mind around right. that. You know, we never imagined that. I don't think he ever imagined it. Mm -hmm. He just wanted to play and make a name for himself and represent his city. Does that make him the greatest 22-year-old to ever play in the NBA? And I know I keep harking back to it, but it literally can't be overstated. Rose did all of this and won 62 games with the first seed in the Eastern Conference, with perhaps Joe Kim Noah as his second best player. It is absolutely astonishing. The Chicago Bulls also advanced to the conference finals for the first time since 62 win season in MJ's final year with the team. But this time, it was D Rose versus the LeBron Wade Bosch trio in Miami. There's Rose all the way! And though the Bulls won the regular season series versus the Heat 4-1, the Eastern Conference Finals proved too much firepower for the Bulls, losing the series in a convincing five games to Miami. In my mind, I really felt like we really had a we really had a shot, you know. And um that like fuck, man. Yeah. Oh, that still, last, still you know, bothers me. Which one bothers you the most? Is it the Eastern Conference final one was uh, you guys were on the upswing. So it was like this I mean, is gonna they, last they, for a they, while. They they beat us in the Eastern Conference Finals four one. Yeah. But if you put all the scores together from that four one series, on aggregate the score was fucking tied. Yes. So that's how close on the aggregate. shit that's how close the shit was, you know. And then the next year, that's the year that D Rose, you know, I, I really felt like we had a better team. Mm -hmm. We were the number one team in the league, you know, and we were coming at everybody's neck. But this was all the whole Bulls fans needed. 62 wins with one All-Star, their best player just won an MVP at 22 years old, and became the youngest MVP winner ever. And now all they needed was a sidekick to Rose to become the ultimate contenders. There's a lot of great players in our game right now when you're talking about the point guard's position. Russell Westbrook. Russ. You know, you talk mm -hmm. about you, uh, uh, Steph, uh, Steph, CP, CP, Kyrie, yep, Kyrie. Yep. Mm -hmm. Listen, none of them dudes wanted no smoke with Derrick Rose and Derrick <laughs> right. Rose. Eric. Exactly. I'm, yeah. I'm telling you right now, none of them dudes wanted no smoke with D Rose during <laughs> D -Rose that time. Is a problem. Trust up. and believe. But that's not what precisely happened. 
The Bulls did draft future all-star Jimmy Butler, but he wasn't a major contributor to the team immediately, so the Bulls entered the next season with largely the same roster and thus the same expectations. They had the third best odds of winning the championship behind LeBron's Heat and Kobe's Lakers, which again was a testament to how extraordinary Rose was. And in a lot of ways, the Bulls met expectations in 2012, finishing first in the East for consecutive years and winning 51 games in the lockout shortened season. However, there was one one caveat, Rose's battle with injuries throughout the season. Rose was phenomenal in games he appeared in, but missing a significant number of games likely stripped him of making the All-NBA First Team for the second year in a row. The Bulls continued their winning ways without Rose, surprisingly, going 18-9 without the reigning MVP that season. So panic never really struck the organization regarding Rose's health right away until the one moment that effectively changed everything. Knockout punch that, look, we're, we're looking to sweep you guys. You wanted us, you were crying out that you bypassed the, the harder team in Miami Heat. Uh oh, uh -oh. Rose came down bad on his left foot. See him holding onto his knee, holding onto his knee and down. And I'm sure everyone around the country oh, is gonna say, wow. why was he in the in the game. The Sixers starters were out of the game. The game was all but over. Why was Derrick Rose even in the game? Rose was coming off five different injuries during the season and to some degree was still damaged goods. And if they opted to rest him in the final regular season as a precaution, then why would you take a major gamble of having him on the floor at the end of a game that was already decided? Now he was going to miss the better part of the next year and fans wondered, was he ever going to be the same player again? So a lot of people may look at my story and be like, man, he's the biggest what if, blah, blah, blah. You right. What if I didn't get injured? The injury was without a doubt devastating for Bulls fans and the entire organization. Playing against the 76ers during that time, and yeah, a lot of people say, hey, you know what, why was Derek in the game? And, you know, I, I would ask the question too. And I'm thinking to myself, like, come on, Tibbs, got to get him mm -hmm. out the game, you know? Yeah. So when that happens, I'm like, oh, snap. I'm like, bro, get up. Like, like, get up. Mm, and then when he doesn't get up and he's walking off, man, it it crushed me. Derek yeah. is a dude that, you know, got a great work ethic, you know what I'm saying, very humble, best point guard in the game. Like, mm -hmm. like, like couldn't nobody mess with D-Rose during yeah, that time, mm -hmm. you know? So to see him going down, I just felt like, like, you know, our chances of winning the championship is, is is very rare to none. And this wasn't any ACL tear. It was an ACL tear to the most dynamic and explosive player in arguably the entire league. And anytime a player relies primarily on explosion, athleticism, and being able to get downhill going 100 miles an hour, lower extremity injuries to this extent leaves huge question marks for the player's future. Rose, of course, missed all of the 2012-13 season, but the Bulls were respectable without their MVP and finished the season with four 45 wins and a trip to the second round of the playoffs. The team wasn't hoping to express the season as a lost cause openly, but they knew they didn't stand much of a chance against the top teams in the East without D Rose in the lineup. So everyone had their eyes and expectations set on the following season. My goal is to win the championship. If, if I was to get any awards from us winning, don't get me wrong, I'll take it. <laughs> but at the same time, um, I know the big picture, and I think that all my teammates know the big picture. The coaches staff know the big picture. The management knows the big, big picture. So I think everyone's on the same page. And when you have that, you got something positive where there's no arguments or anything, and um, it's just one goal. And you're not going to let um, some so little get in the way. Chicago basketball fans, Derrick Rose fans, have been waiting for. He's back, and he'll be playing here at the United Center tonight. Chicago backcourt. Oh, really, he's a, a natural three-man. He's had to make the adjustment to becoming a two. It's Rose. Oh, nice move by Rose off the dribble. I have him one of eight for the field. It's Rose. Derrick Rose on the really good. Rose with a nice pass to set it up for Boozer. Surgery, here's Rose for three, yes! Derrick Rose from downtown. Fans were thrilled to see D-Rose back in action. The league never felt the same without the Heat and the Bulls fighting it out for the top spot in the Eastern Conference. You know, the way the two teams did before Rose went down. 
but the rust on D Rose was evident. And despite a series of subpar performances to open the season, many fans and pundits chalked it up to Russ. And Rose needed some time to get his leg back underneath him. He looked almost just as explosive as he was before the injury, but his field goal percentage took a considerable hit. And his finishing around the rim wasn't nearly as effective. He didn't look like the same dominating player for long stretches. But rest assured, he just needed a few games to get right. What caused Derek to leave the game? You see him make this little back cut. And they got a hand on it. Now watch right there. He kind of planted Derek leaving for the locker room and he's moving gingerly. So Derek Rose, as far as I'm concerned, is finished. So a lot of people may look at my story and be like, man, he's the biggest what if, blah, blah, blah. You right. What if I didn't get in injured? Rose, look out. Here's Rose. Derek Rose putting a shoe on here at Madison Square Garden. After playing for the first time in over 500 days, all it took was 10 games into the new season before another knee injury. Sideline rose for the remainder of the season. It was as close to a non-contact injury as you will get, and his knees failed him for the second time in only 5 years in the NBA. Was D. Rose ever going to be the same player again? It's what everyone wondered for another calendar year. The Bulls finished with 48 wins, led by Luol Deng and Carlos Boozer, but none of that mattered. All people wanted to know was about Rose. So many questions, so many people are eager to see your game now yeah. after, after a little bit of hunger among, yeah. among the fan base. Um, what do you know about your body and your health now that you can share with people that they might not know? I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> I know I'm going to get the question all the time, but um, I'm, I'm used to it. Um, I know I'm not worried about anything, so um, I can I can sit here and say they shouldn't worry about anything. But what happened in the past, uh, of course, is always that, that question is always going to be on their mind. So uh, I'm used to it. I'm healthy, and then I'm just trying to move forward. Start off with Derrick Rose. It's it's really one of the great stories this year. We hear so much about injuries. He's overcome two major injuries. So many people are happy because not only is he a dynamic player on the court. But he's humble. He's a team first guy. He's what everything the NBA good is about. Biggest Derrick Rose fan. Uh, I've always been the biggest Derrick Rose fan. I've always said that I would take him uh, that MVP or against any point guard, since or whatever. I just think he was that special. And as injuries happen, things happen in the game, to see his mentality and his humility. Rose was back, but essentially two entire seasons missed is nothing to sneeze. It was a huge deal. His body couldn't assimilate to in-game speed. And in just the second game of the season, Rose hurt his ankle against the Cavs and will go on to miss the next two games. A few weeks later, he missed time after hurting his hamstring against the Raptors. And it was beginning to seem like the Bulls might have to decide on Rose and his future soon. Jimmy Butler was coming into his own and the Bulls featured quite a competitive roster, but their ex-superstar just couldn't escape the injury demons. Of the game. Derek lost the handle on it, dies for it, and it's out of bounds. What appeared to be no big deal at the time turned out to be a big deal. After the Bulls played the Bucks early in 2015, it was announced after the game that Rose would miss six to eight weeks with a meniscus injury. No one knew what to think anymore. And for some, they had seen so much that another injury for Rose wasn't in the least bit surprising. But he did have one last great moment left in him for that season. Finds Rose. Rose trying to get open, fires away. Bang! It's over! The Bulls win! emotional, series-defining, and one for the city of Chicago. A game winner to push the Bulls to a 2-1 series lead over the favorite Cleveland Cavaliers. All of a sudden, things seem to take a new turn. What seemed like a lost season, again, just a couple months earlier, the Bulls were now two wins away from their first conference final since the year Rose won MVP. After another strong performance in game four, Rose struggled in a game five loss that saw him shoot seven of 24 from the floor. Game 6 was all around bad for Chicago. They lost by 21 points and were sent home again. There was a standstill in the organization. The Bulls were capable of winning at a high level if and only if Rose was able to stay healthy long enough for the team to build a lasting camaraderie. The Bulls and especially D. Rose faced high expectations heading into the 2015-16 season. But this turned out to be arguably the most disappointing season for the team in the Rose era. Finishing the season with a mediocre 42 wins and even failing to clinch 
clinch a playoff spot. The 27-year-old Rose appeared in the most games since his MVP season, though he was still banged up here and there. But more significantly, no one thought of Rose as the player he once was. No one thought of Rose as the guy who was arguably the best 22-year-old to ever play in the NBA. No one considered Rose as a superstar any longer, let alone MVP material. And that narrative only intensified when the Bulls came to a decision that will break the hearts of millions of fans. What's up, E? You lying. You serious? Well, it's an upgrade talent-wise. I mean, the fact is, is that Derrick Rose is still a significant name. Uh, he doesn't have star power, the same star power that he used to have, but he's a significant name. Obviously, when you hear that Derrick Rose is Chicago. I wish he would take look for his shot right there. Oh! <laughs> How about that Houdini move by Derrick Rose? Up and under and through the rim. And he's so close. Percent from the field, 17 for 39. What a move by Rose! Oh! Yes, and it counts over Joel Anthony. Right here, it's for the city of Chicago more than anything. Thank you. I appreciate it. My family appreciated it, and the organization appreciated it. Thank you all, and we love you all. He got to where he got. Without even, like, you know what I'm saying? We don't even know if he reached his full potential. I guess I do understand it different. Me being from Chicago, I, for me, coming out as a rookie, I never could have been what D. Rose was, dog. <laughs> like, people got to understand what this kid did. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. This man, this man, this man, this man, this man born and raised, city of Chicago. This ain't no outskirts or surrounding area. It is 606, whatever. He's Chicago, born and bred to get drafted, one year removed, not even a year, bro, like six, seven, eight months removed from, from Simeon High School, go to the Bulls, where they don't even draft Chicago kids. Yeah, and the then you mm -hmm. go win rookie of the year, and you, like, literally, he lived out every Chicago kid's dream. D. Rose entered Michael Jordan's stratosphere as Chicago's most celebrated superheroes in his seven seasons with the Bulls, but it was time to move on. Rose stayed with the New York Knicks for one year and showed flashes of his former self, but there wasn't any more speculations on who or what Derrick Rose would be moving forward. Rose opted to sign with the Cleveland Cavaliers the following season and had high hopes for the deepest playoff run of his career. But his stay in Cleveland was short-lived as he was traded at the 2018 trade deadline to the Minnesota Timberwolves. People read the writing on the wall. D. Rose was nothing more than a role player, but Rose proved that he had plenty of game left just when you thought he was hanging on for one last Right. 50 points and one of the greatest regular season performances of the decade and Rose's highest scoring game since February of 2011 and this is what Rose had to say. I mean I didn't know it was going to be special at all. I was just going out there to play my way of playing basketball and uh, we knew that we had some guys down and um, I was starting so before the game I asked Tiz what he want and he just told me to go out there and play my game. Everything, man. I work my ass off, bro. I, like, man, I wouldn't have did this for the, the franchise, the, the organization, the, the fans, everybody, man. I wouldn't be able to play the way I play, man. What Derrick Rose did tonight, I don't know if a lot of y'all ever got an opportunity to hang with the guy. Um, what, what he gives to his mind and his body. Um, you know, just to play one game is something that I watched, you know, being his teammate for the time that we were in Cleveland together. And um, when you talk about perseverance, um, that, that's the, the true definition of it. Um, you talk about a guy who's the, one of the, probably, I think he's the youngest MVP to ever play in this game and to have the battles and battles with his injuries, to be able to come back. Um, and, and no matter what everybody else was talking about, because at the ma majority is always people who never stepped into the arena, um, had so many things to say bad about him and what he should do and he should do this and do that. Uh, for him to set a career high tonight um, in a win in Minnesota, um, 
I think that's unbelievable. I think every kid that, not, they don't even have to play sports. Any kid that's going through anything in life about, you know, adversity and triumph and trying to just get over the hump, you know, you can look at that performance by Derrick Rose tonight. And, uh, and, and that's why our game is, is so unbelievable because, you know, even when a superhero is knocked down, he's still a superhero at the end of the day. And Derrick Rose showed uh, why he's still a superhero. Amazing story, just in, in terms of what he's been through. Um, it's great for, obviously, him. Comeback story where all the opportunity, believe in yourself, and um, we obviously knew what he was capable of um, and the level that he was at before the injuries. And I know people that have been around him from from then that have talked about how hard he works and obviously you don't become an MVP by not, not working hard, but that has carried him um, through the, the roller coaster ride he's been on. Uh, obviously very fitting that uh, he did it against Utah too. Well, he's a guy who's been an MVP, um, you know, and then to have so many unfortunate situations come up um, at the you know the height of his career, um, it's unfortunate, and you know I think um, he's a guy that's pushed through it all. He's kept working, he's kept his mind strong, and um, you know I'm just happy to see that you know he's able to compete now. You know, um, you know I think everybody's happy to see him back on the court. Do you enjoy the opportunity to play against him? I mean I I enjoy every opportunity to play. Um, you know, but obviously. Him being who he is, uh, you know, I think anytime you meet a, a top point guard in the league, it brings the best out of him. It's not so much how it starts, though that's the time we closely associate with Rose's career in the NBA. Injuries or no injuries, his career will always be defined as an icon, a hero, and an inspiration to athletes across the world. He's had a special career, all things considered, and he's just the Rose that continues to bloom. He never failed without getting back up. It's the only right that we say.